This faculty club is actually quite a historic site in the university because this is the old library. Uh, the ground floor was the ground floor of the library and these were all the stacks uh, on the side. So this is like a little historic place uh, in the medical center. So um, basically uh, we wanted to uh, get people together um, and the, four, and the main reason is to find out what uh, um, the celiac center can really do for people with celiac disease. So uh, the format is going to be some short presentations about some, some aspects of celiac disease from myself and my colleagues. And then we'd like to find out what the celiac center can do for you. Um, and... Uh, so, like, take notes and speak up. <laughs> um, we, we hope to have most of the discussion after the presentations, but if things come up after the presentations, um, you know, we'll have some time in that for questions and that. So just as an introduction to the centre, um, the Celiac Centre is about patient care, education of patients, the general public, uh, medical personnel, research and advocacy. And, um, you know, I've got to thank everyone who's been involved with helping keep the centre going because one of the problems with this centre is that I started it out of my office. And um, the Celiac Centre really started uh, many, many years ago when Rory Jones and Anne Whalen and Sue Goldstein got me together with the then Chief of GI uh, who, Michael Field and said like why don't you start a celiac centre and he said you could do anything and I went to the dean and I said that I'd like to start a celiac centre and he said you can start whatever you like but we don't have any money to help you. So one of the problems is I started this in my office and therefore we got no money to do this from the university um, or from the, the hospital and in fact like, if they give us a new room, we just pay more rent. Or if we get a new phone, we pay more phone bills type of thing. So I've got to thank everyone who's contributed to the centre because all our activities have been dependent upon uh, funds that we've got in. Um, and, uh, you know, originally I started the Celiac Centre as a way of raising money for research. Um, because that was where my interest was, and uh, as well as looking after patients. And, and then a lady gave us money. Uh, she said, I'll give you a check for $300,000 to start off your celiac center if you use it for patient care and education. So that made me think, now how are we gonna do this to fulfill her requirements? And so that's when I, I got, a, a nurse. Uh, Rory and I started to work on the website and we started to get an email distribution list and um, and that actually changed the direction of the Celiac Centre to make the top thing here patient care you know, our prime role and we've really grown in that respect and it's through patient care and all the people that have been coming along here that we've been able to do all these other things that the centre has been like very good at doing because my research is basically based on all the patients. Um, you know, you can't do research. It's like saying I'll do research on um, uh, health of uh, astronauts. Uh, there's no point if you don't see any astronauts in deciding that that's where your research is. So. Um, and this is a wonderful place to do uh, things, to look after patients, uh, to, to get collaborative uh, efforts from amongst the colleagues uh, here um, in patient care and in looking at different aspects of a disease. Um, I'm sure that there are more physicians diagnosed with celiac disease in this medical centre than in any other. We had a gastroenterologist, We've got an endocrinologist, there's a cardiologist, um, the guy who ran the genome centre, he's got celiac disease. Um, the GI fellow uh, said he got a note from his cousin that uh, just got diagnosed with celiac disease and she advised for him to get screened. 
So I explain, well, maybe that's why he's got that funny looking hairdo or something like that. Um, so this is all that we do now. Um, and these are the personnel uh, that the Celiac Centre, so it's really grown from my office and me, right? Um, and like the greatest thing about having a Celiac Centre is the only credibility lies not so much in the patient physician care, but in having a nutritionist who's an expert because like they don't exist. I was going to speak to Michael Fawn because a patient who was involved with the group out there was referred to a nutritionist uh, in Northern Long Island and you know, the patient said to me, it was a little bit strange because she like put a magnet on my hand and so I said, all right then. And she told me some of the things that I was deficient in from this magnet on my hand. So, you know, the credibility of uh, patient care all around the country and that is not that secure. But, uh, you know, we have Suzanne Simpson as our expert nutritionist. Um, one of the great things about the centre is that we can look after both children and adults and there's great advantage to that because um, they can see the one nutritionist and they can transition from the paediatric to their adult care. Because the striking thing about celiac disease in this country is that patients have not had medical care directed to their celiac disease. Uh, they've often had difficulty getting diagnosed and then they're left on their own. Um, you know, we, we're not here to replace the uh, major support groups at all. Um, you know, uh, CSA, uh, CDF, GIG, we're not here to replace them. We're here to give medical care. And uh, part of that is nutritional advice. And Suzanne will talk a little bit about what's the role of an expert nutritionist. Um, but we have uh, Phil Caslow and Amy D. Felice. Um, I've been so appreciative that I've been able to get other physicians interested uh, because um, celiac disease is not like a sexy thing amongst gastroenterologists. Um, you know, GI docs make their money from doing procedures. Um, and it's meant that a lot of gastroenterologists are less looking at cognitive things and trying to work it out. You know, if the answer doesn't come from like doing one, two or three colonoscopies, then you try one, two or three upper endoscopies and then you're left with not knowing what else to do. So it's been very great for me to get um, Suzanne Lewis and uh, more recently Christina Tennyson to come along as gastroenterologists seeing patients and they're going to talk. And then we've developed quite a cohort of uh, people doing research and we've funded a lab um, and we fund research personnel. And then you know, a few years ago, I got Cynthia interested in this. You know, when I, when I took on the task of organising the International Symposium, I found out that you had to raise money to do it. Um, and we raised nearly enough to pull it off. And I was about to throw, throw it all in when I was told that um, the difference between what we raised and the expenditure uh, for the International Symposium was going to come out of my salary. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, this is a tough place to work. It's a great place, but it's a tough place. So that's, these are the personnel that make up the Celiac Centre now.